of the Open Meeting Act is posted by the entrance to the Council Chambers and is available for public review. Uh, tonight we have the invitation with Jeff Catalik of the Memorial Methodist Church. Jeff? Now, let us pray. God, I just thank you for the work of our city employees and our council. Uh, they do a good job. I know there are things that they'd like to do to help our citizens and sometimes their hands are tied because of other regulations and other commitments that have to be made. But we just thank, ask you to be with them as they deliberate this evening and uh, make uh, choices for the residents of our community. Thank you for the place in which we live and the people who support and, and uh, actively are involved by volunteering in our community make it a better place. So I just pray your blessings on this meeting and this gathering this evening. two of our new officers to the council. We have our new detective, his name is Jerry Hunter. Um, he comes to us with around 30 years of experience total in law enforcement. So we look forward to uh, the work that he's gonna be able to do for us. And the other one is uh, James Wright. He comes to us with about three years of law enforcement experience and uh, we're happy to have both of them and get them out on the road and working for us. So I just like to introduce them to the council. Okay. Excellent. Welcome aboard. Thank you. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is to approve a proclamation designated September 17th through 23rd. 2024 as Constitution Week and authorize the mayor to sign. I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor for the mayor, first name. Cast Jane, the votes cast nay. Okay. Uh, we have a public hearing. And, and prior but, to moving forward with the public hearing, yes. this probably just needs to be removed from the agenda. Okay. We have a specific request uh, for the applicant uh, making the So 
So both the public hearing as well as the uh, um, so the 3A and 3B local rules would work. Uh, we just do a motion to table. Right. It's in the it's in the back right there. Yep, it's in the I want to do it. I'll move to remove the agenda at the request of the applicant for Jose Domingo's items three A and three B. I'll second that. Any discussion? Just hey, all those in favor vote yay or say I'm not quite with it. Just <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, five votes cast Jay, no votes cast Nay. Do I get to read that long winded one? <laughs> it's all yours. I move to recess at the City Council and convene a public hearing for the purpose of receiving public comment regarding proposed modifications to McCook Zoning Ordinance Number 2016 2929, Article 3. Definitions adding shows. Prohibiting shouts in Article 8, residential low density district, Article 9, residential medium density district, Article 10, residential medium density, mobile home district, and Article 11, residential high density district, reducing the maximum height provision for accessory buildings from 35 feet to 25 feet in Article 8, residential low density district. Article 9, Residential Medium Density District, Article 10, Residential Medium Density Mobile Home District, and Article 11, Residential High Density District, and amending accessory buildings maximum height requirement in Article 21, Supplementary District Regulations, Section 2103 from 20 feet to 25 feet, and ask the City Attorney to act as hearing officer. I'll second that. <clears throat> in favor of the first day. <clears throat> Mine is not moving. Uh, you have to scroll down on the right side. Yeah. Scroll on the right side of the black box or scroll down. Yeah, I just scroll down. There you go. There are four exhibits being offered for this hearing. Exhibit number one is the city manager's report. That's two pages. Exhibit number two is a notice of public hearing. One page. Exhibit number three is ordinance number 2024-3090. That's five pages. Exhibit number four is the email from Tyler Neal. I'll accept exhibits one through four in the evidence. Take comments from city staff before opening up for public comment. Thanks. Thanks, Nathaniel. Um, it's kind of an odd uh, arrangement tonight. Uh, this was the planning commission item uh, that was heard prior to the council meeting. Um, typically, we try to have a planning commission and council meeting separated, but <clears throat> tonight it wasn't feasible. So, um, this specific request actually was an item that we had on our list uh, for the zoning regulation updates that we're working on at a steering committee for council appointed. Uh, that is going through the zoning regulations uh, and Shouse actually was a topic, a hot button topic that uh, our consultant Miller and Associates had said, yeah, we're going to probably need to go ahead and define what a Shouse is. Uh, and as a uh, city, we've, we've uh, had a couple of questions as well, too, regarding whether Shouses are allowed in the residential districts or not. Um, there was a structure uh, that was uh, built on East 6th Street that probably would classify as a shouts. Um, at the time that the structure was built, um, I know that our building inspector uh, was looking at the regulations, trying to determine whether or not it's allowable or not allowable. Um, and in his uh, estimation, based upon the information that we had, there's nothing in the regs, whether it was the International Building Code uh, or any of the accessory codes our own uh, ordinances that would preclude it. And I mentioned in my report, Nebraska is a Dillon's rule state that basically means that if there's no law that disallows a requested action, 
the city doesn't have the authority to do anything to preclude that action from happening. And so, so the structure was built. I think afterwards, I don't know how many phone calls I got. I don't know, Terry got a number of phone calls regarding the structure. Um, and so our plan was to go ahead and include Shouse as a topic of discussion in our uh, zoning regulation update. The uh, zoning regulation update is moving forward. This is kind of an aside. Uh, Barry and Tara and I have been working on the zoning regulation update, uh, trying to get it into a form that we can take back to the steering committee. Um, there's only one more steering committee meeting that's scheduled, so we want to make sure that we've had a chance to put our eyes on it and make the changes that staff feels like we need to make. And then following that, uh, we'll go back to the steering committee, then the planning commission, the council, and then we'd like to bring it back two times to the planning commission and council so everybody has some time to go through and take a look at it. It's very time consuming. But, um, getting back onto the subject at hand, um, the concern that you have and the concern that I have with these types of requests, and I've had a lot of requests over the years, a lot of times you'll see a principal structure. So, <coughs> so in the residential density districts, there are very, very specific uses that can be made for your lot. Most of them revolve around uh, residential property uh, dwellings. And, and that's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, you want to make sure that your, your residential districts are set aside for uh, residential purposes. Um, the, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, residential district uh, that, that we currently have uh, allow for a couple of additional items as well too, but those items are very uh, uh, specific to uh, residential uh, type structures. So um, what we are uh, looking at trying to do or what we're proposing right now is limiting what you can put onto a lot so that way it's going to be specific to a house. Chouses are kind of a combination. They might be storage, they might be workshop they might be you know something that, that uh, has maybe an accessory use if you look at the permitted principal uh, uh, use that it's tied to but as a standalone they're not typically allowed in residential districts and so the concern is with the shouses the the primary purpose is actually probably storage of maybe a large rv or utility vehicle or whatever the case may be um, or workshop it's really not for residential. And we're trying to assure that that doesn't happen because you don't want to devalue the other properties around that area that are truly residential structures. The other thing is the concern might be if you were to allow a shouse in residential or secondary, when it gets sold to the next person, that person's going to use it for accessory purposes, not for the primary purpose. So the person that's living next to the shouse may say, yeah, you know what? I'm good with this, I'll make sure I maintain it, I'll take care of it, it's right next to my primary structure, um, it's, it's gonna fit. But the next person they sell it to, because it's gonna be on a standalone lot, that individual may say, you know what, I'm gonna just use it for storage. And they aren't tied to that lot like you would be if it was a residential structure. You're not gonna maintain it like you would if it was a residential structure. Um, you know, you're not there, you know, outside, out of line, so if you don't see it on an everyday basis, it's easy sometimes to let things go. So the shout provision that we're asking the council to consider, uh, we would ask that for right now, um, uh, the uh, uh, shouses, which would be a storage space or a workshop connected to a living space, not be allowed. Uh, and then as we move through the zoning regulations and kind of get a feel for what we want on the zoning regulations, we can always amend this, because like I said, this is gonna go to the Planning Commission and the Council again in the uh, larger um, uh, comprehensive zoning update. Uh, but for right now, we do have an issue. We know that there's a property owner that's uh, doing some dirt work, not quite sure exactly what they're wanting to do, but um, the concern is that there could potentially be a shouse that's gonna be located in the residential medium density district, and if that's the case, uh, it doesn't start creating issues for the other property owners that are located in that area. So um, that's the reason for the request. The other items are just more uh, housekeeping items. I shouldn't say housekeeping, one of them is housekeeping. 
the Shalsky thing I was you're more weird. Uh, <laughs> Don't quit your day job. <laughs> so one of the one of the items or one of the requests uh, that we're making to the council is to uh, differentiate the size and height of accessory buildings going from 35 feet to 25 feet. Uh, we've seen a lot of shops, accessory buildings that have been built that are a little bit larger than what you typically see for an accessory type use. Uh, right now, 35 foot height or the height of the principal structure is allowable. The concern that you have is if the accessory structure uh, starts <coughs> to be put on the same footing or the same level as, as a residential structure, is it really secondary in nature to the principal uh, use? And so, for a while we've been talking about decreasing the height of the accessory structures from 25 feet. Um, while we've been working through the supplementary uh, uh, language in the new code, we also realized that the existing provision in the supplement section allows for 20 foot accessory structures, but nothing higher than that. So you have, I mean, you've got uh, two provisions that are at odds with one another. In the residential district, it says you can have 35 foot structures potentially. And in the supplementary, supplemental district, it says you can't exceed 20. So what we're proposing is 25 feet, just to make sure that everything is uniform. That should accommodate RVs. Barry and I have been looking at different structures around town. It should accom accommodate large RVs, you know, storage for UTVs, whatever the case may be. Uh, but, but it also would make it so it's a little bit more conforming with what the primary use of the structure or the lot's supposed to be. So. That's it in a nutshell. Any questions for city staff from council? Any comments or questions from the public? Tyler, do you wanna? Yeah, um, so I submitted an email. Um, Go ahead, and I know you did the first meeting. Go ahead and come forward, introduce yeah. yourself. Um, Tyler Hill, I, I live at 1510 Centennial um, Drive. Um, my wife and I moved to McCook about 17 years ago. Um, you know, McCook grew on us, it's now Holes. We just bought our, our dream home on 1510 Centennial Drive. Um, about a year ago now, uh, the neighbor uh, who owns the property, it was a, it was an empty lot between us, um, started moving soil. Um, there's no restrictions for, from him um, moving um, soil, moving dirt around. Um, I've had lots of conversations with Nate and Barry about the situation. Um, I definitely built a a basement so far, um, and with, without a doubt, it's, it's probably going to be a story unit or a shallows. Um, I tried myself to talk to the property owner about, hey, what's going on here? You know, I was able to be neighborly about it. Um, literally no, no conversation. Well, little conversation about um, what is actually happening. I'm, I'm very unneighborlike, in, in my opinion. But um, so here I am a year later. Um, like I said, bought my dream home about a year ago. And um, we're probably looking at a house next door. And I do believe that it will affect my property values. I do believe it will affect the property values of the community, of the neighborhood. And uh, so I'm just here to support the agenda of, of putting ordinances on things like this. Um, I come from a small community, the Sand Hills, and I can tell you what relaxed ordinances do to a community and what it does to the hill system. Because for too long, you have one neighbor that builds one structure, anything they want, and then you have a, a neighbor next door that might have a home property value worth, worth twice it. And, uh, and over time, um, with ordinance not being maintained, not being updated, you have a dead community. Um, property values aren't there to support the school, the school's dying, they're consolidating, doing the best they can to survive. Um, and that's what I love about McCook. It's a nice community. In West Nebraska, and I think we should do everything we can to maintain that. So, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, thank you. Any other comments, questions from the public? Hearing none, I recommend we reconvene. Move to adjourn the public hearing and re reconvene the city council. Those in favor vote yay, opposed nay.
I votes cast J, no votes cast nay. Next item on the agenda is ordinance number 2024-3090, implementing modifications to McCook zoning ordinance number 2016-2029. I introduce ordinance number 2024-3090 by title and ask the clerk to please read the title. An ordinance in the city of McCook, Nebraska, providing for the amendment of McCook zoning ordinance number 2016-2929, amending Article 3 definitions, adding shouts, amending Article 8 residential low density living dense district, Article 9 residential living density district, Article 10 residential medium density mobile home district, and Article 11 residential high density district. Prohibiting the shelves and reducing the maximum height provision for accessory buildings from 35 to 25 and amending Article 21, Supplementary District Regulations, Section 2103, changing the accessory building's maximum height requirement from 20 to 25 feet, provide for the repeal of any, of any other conflicting ordinances and providing a time and date from and after which this ordinance shall take effect to be enforced. The next item on the agenda is to consider statutory rule required reading on three separate occasions be suspended. Motion to suspend the rule must be adopted by three fourths of the council. Ordinance number 2024-3090 has been introduced, read by title, and move that the statutory rule requiring reading on three different days be suspended. Second. Any discussion, <coughs> council? Those in favor, vote nay. Opposed, nay. Five votes cast, J. No votes cast, nay. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is the final passage of Ordinance Number 2024-3090. I move for final passage of Ordinance Number 2024-3090. Second. <laughs> okay. Any discussion, Council? All those in favor, vote nay, opposed nay. Five votes cast, J, no votes cast, nay. Ordinance number 2024-3090 is declared lawfully passed and adopted upon publication as required by law. Okay, Thank you. I know, mine coming right. too. I got, I got it. I canceled <laughs> it. Wow. I got it. <laughs> okay, next item on the agenda is a public hearing to consider the 2025 McCook Plan of Street Improvements. Craig. I move to recess as a city council and convene a public hearing for the purpose of receiving public comment on the 2025 McCook Plan of Street Improvements with the city attorney to act as the hearing officer. I second that. Is there any discussion, Council? Okay, all those in favor vote nay, opposed nay. Five votes cast, Jane, no votes cast, nay. Gentlemen. There are eight exhibits being offered for this hearing. Exhibit number one is the city manager's report, that's one page. Exhibit number two is a notice of public hearing, one page. Exhibit number three is resolution number 2424-25, one page. Exhibit number four is the one-year street plan, one page. Exhibit number five is the long-range street plan, one page. Exhibit number six is the 2025 plan of street improvement flat map, one page. Exhibit number seven is 2025 one- and six-year plan budget spreadsheet, one page. Exhibit number eight is projects completed and or contracted in the last fiscal year, that's one page. Uh, Accept exhibits one through eight to evidence to take comments from city staff before opening up to public comment. Nate. I'm going to turn it over to Greg Cobb. I'll turn it over to Greg. Greg, you're going to start. Um, actually, this past year, obviously, we had a, our biggest year of street construction in the I've been in the streets of the city project. Half of the money expended was on Kip's project between North Point and the business park. So it's funded through tax increment financing. The other half is funded through our regular street budgets that include the gas tax and, and the money that the city puts in our sales tax. 
Um, they will be done. Uh, right now we have the major asphalt project under construction. Um, the schedule is probably close to where they are probably not going to be completely done by either September or whatever you choose between October. They should be completely done. Um, North Point is completely done. The Douglas Park has a little bit of finish grading to be done. Uh, rock on 17th Street will be done. It's all graded out. And the draining systems are installed and ready to go. So, I believe there's some street lights too that you put down there. There are street lights. That's done through the West Point. Right. right. Yes. But they're waiting on, I think they're waiting on the grading. To they're waiting that. on the final grading. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're still working on that. But that's it's the thing to do. It's going to be done in a day. Just waiting on getting all that finished up. Um, the one year plan, or the overall plan, we did not add any projects to the plan this year. Um, we felt after this year, Hal said take a breath. <laughs> build, up, build up the funds a little bit. So the projects in the long range plan, the one year plan, have been on the plan the previous year. We do have on the one year plan to paving, uh, paving district and drainage district. That's West 14th from O to Q. Um, there's been a lot of development there. Uh, the street needs to be finished. The, uh, and there's some drainage issues there from all the development that you, I'm sure you guys know anytime you drive down on Q Street after a rain, it's covered with man rocks every time. We need to get that fixed. We have um, a preliminary plan done. We have meetings set up with the landowners, the property owners for improvement districts for middle coast. Uh, actually, I need myself with all the issues. So, uh, we should be ready to go. And then we would bring back to the council the plans what the property owners say about improvement districts. So that will be coming back to the council hopefully probably in the November meeting something like that so um, you can look at uh, the priorities we have beyond that and basically what I did on the priorities is that shows up on the on the long range street plan there in order there um, what we did we we did move a few ahead, but we had some uh, couple issues that were further down. The small project on the Q West Second Q Street intersection is just a, a concrete wall drain that is it's, it's, it's past time to replace it. Um, we moved up the West Old Highway Six, which is the road to the transfer station, with just the the truck traffic on that road is it's probably one of the worst streets in the coast. Yes. We're fixing the one right on the north side of Wellsport in this project, so we're going to get rid of one of the worst streets this year. So that, that will be, and you know, these other streets, uh, we did move some down. We have fairly high on the priority um, West 2nd and Key Streets. That we did an evaluation of that this spring and felt we could fix that and get some more years out of that street with armor coating. So we did that. And that street got both track filled and armor coated. Got the armor coated, actually. So to extend the life of that pavement. So that one moves down. It's, uh, it's still on the list, but it's probably moved down. Um, other than that, we just then basically moved the projects that were in the order before. Eight projects off, so they've been moved, moved up, and you can see where they are. We do try to evaluate every year budgets, and we look very hard at, at the one year plan to see what needs to happen in the one year. And again, the reason that the two projects that are on the one year plan right now that are shown as permanent districts, so that money did not come out of our, our regular street budget. So as I said in my report, we're trying to build that budget. Any questions?
questions, Council? Any comments? It's been busy. I can tell. It's been busy. It has been. Yeah. The only thing I will say is on the on the projects completed, uh, Country Club Drainage, we are um, under contract, uh, technically contract, but we do have a contract to line up to put it in with our own Country Club Drive sometime in the East Bay. On the old, I have a question on the on the old highway out to the transfer station. Could you widen that a little bit? Because sometimes you know, you meet a semi and it's it, it would add a pretty substantial cost to the project okay. in order to do that. Um, there are some elevation. Um, uh, I think by the time we overlay it, right now it's it's the old. It's the old Lincoln Highway Center that has the curbs on the inside, which narrows the highway by, by, by the time we overlay it, I think we're going to get rid of that curb. Okay. So you're going to think it's wider, but it's not. Okay. <laughs> and I just don't feel it, wider. When you meet a, you know, we meet a transfer yeah. dump truck, it is, it is tight. It's tight here. Another problem is when Acres pushes their combines out, that water runs down. And that contributes, I think, a lot to that deterioration of that. That road is yeah. part of that project, some kind of a ditch drainage system on both sides to get the water to the I would like to visit with them prior to uh, the design. Um, yes, just get the water off our street. It would be. Have to be over there. It would be, it would be very nice. Otherwise, I think it, it probably may not. We'll continue. Okay. I'll just tell you, Norris Avenue right now looks awesome. It was like Which part? The <laughs> <laughs> part that's done. Oh, you lose any film, oh, though, prior but it's going to be nice. It will be nice. It will be nice. Hopefully, we'll have it done by Friday. <laughs> I mean, we're going to be far enough north that it shouldn't affect public safety. Sarah's getting her cell phone number if it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be involved. <laughs> it will be done, right? <laughs> Thank you. Any questions or comments from the public before we let these guys go? Oh. All right, you guys. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, do we have a motion? Uh, I'm going to adopt resolution number 2024 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. oh, What? Oh, come out. Oh, that's right. I move to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the city council. Second. Okay, any discussion council? Okay, all those in favor, vote yay, first yay. You go first, what's on second? I think it's cast Jay, no it's cast May. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I moved to adopt resolution number 2024-25, approving the 2025 a cook plan of street improvements. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion council? Okay, all those in favor, vote yay, first yay. votes cast Jane, no votes cast May. Next item is the consent agenda. The consent agenda is approved on one motion. Any item listed on the consent agenda may, by the request of any single council member or public in attendance, be considered as a separate item under the regular agenda. Anything, council? I have Staff? No Nothing, Your Honor. Um, Anybody in the public? Okay. On the consent agenda, make a motion to accept items A through J. Second. <coughs> We've got a motion to accept A through J. All those in favor of voting A, of course, nay. Okay. I think it's cash J, no it's cash A. Okay, under the regular agenda, we have a presentation from Director Bush with West Central Nebraska Development District in regards to property in their designated area that should be declared a nuisance, properties that should be rescinded from the previous declaration of nuisance, and properties that need abatement. Good 
Good evening, Erica Bush with West Central, and tonight I will be presenting on the 2024 McCook Nuisance Program. On tonight's agenda, I will be recommending one property to declare nuisance by resolution. I will be recommending four properties for a motion to abate, and I will be recommending four properties for a resolution to rescind. And I will go over each um, property individually. First up, 2024 MCC 109 with parcel ID 0010620000. This property we are recommending to declare a nuisance for the following items. Um, there are buckets, barrels, receptacles that could collect the stagnant water, discarded material or um, litter to include the cardboard. We have scrap wood. We have inoperable equipment, and I say inoperable because it has been there um, for over a month. To include the lawnmower, the scrap metal. The brick is neatly stacked, and so that is a real concern. Next, I'm recommending to, for a motion to debate on the following four properties. This first property, 2024 MCC 006 at 1110 West 13th. I've had no communication from this property owner, but this property has cleared a lot of items. The items that remain are mainly on the driveway and a little bit scattered on the rest of the yard, but to include scrap metal. The scrap wood is neatly stacked, so that is of no concern, but buckets, barrels, or receptacles that could collect that stagnant water, um, including coolers. There are appliances, inoperable equipment. Packing crates or pallets. Next property, 2024 MCC 010 at 1401 West M. And this property has unlicensed vehicles, scrap wood, scrap metal, a toolbox, receptacles to include, it looks like a lawnmower bag, but again, I'm not too sure, discarded material. I posted this property, so they had an additional about three weeks to clear. I received no communication from this property owner. Next property, 2024 MCC 043 at 1111 West 12th. In this property, I've had communication from the property owner and also the tenant. Um, the major concern right now are the tires. The tenant is having trouble getting rid of the tires or recycling the tires. And like I said, I've been talking with the property owner. He's on board to get everything cleaned up. Um, but again, they have been very cooperative and understanding of the program. Tires, buckets, barrels, scrap metal, scrap wood. Auto parts. Next property, 2024 MCC 1080 at 1201 West 13th. I have received communication from this property owner in the past. Uh, the items, they have cleared a lot of items, but the items that remain now would be the buckets or barrels, receptacles, scrap metal, scrap wood, and tires and also an unlicensed vehicle. And next, I'm recommending to rescind, I'm recommending, I apologize, a resolution to rescind for the following four properties. 2024 MCC 024 at 1009 West 13th, 2024 MCC 029 at 1112 West 12th, 2024 MCC 093 at 1410 West 14th, in 2024, MCC 103 at 1405 West 16th. In summary, 256 properties were reviewed, 110 courtesy letters were sent out, with 101 properties clearing, four properties recommending to rescind for tonight, that is included tonight's count, one property I'm recommending to declare nuisance, and this is a little bit of a straggle property. Uh, we had a little bit of a mix up with ownership, but now that we got that cleared up, we are moving forward with declaring. Uh, four properties I'm recommending for a motion to abate, which I'd like to remind everybody that that doesn't mean we're going to go on the property tomorrow and abate. It provides the property owners additional time to clear. 
Um, and then four properties have already been out of motion to abate, so they are ready for five quarters, which will happen in October, but we like to wait until the end of the season and we get we wait for all the properties that are going to be scheduled for abatement and do all the five days at once. Um, before that happens, I will present to the council. Um, oops. Erica, we lost power just on the TVs. Let's turn it back on. Can you hear us? Okay, can you hear us still? Yep. Okay. We're back. Okay. I don't know where I cut off, but that'll do it. <laughs> Questions? Anybody? Oh, we have on. Erica, you're talking about rescinding certain properties, and one of them you list is Town 9 West 13th Street. Do you have an updated photograph of that property, please? <laughs> for rescinding for 1009 West 13th? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that property cleared those nuisance items, so there's nothing to take pictures of. So, no, I do not have pictures because they removed uh, the coolers, the scrap metal, and the scrap wood that were in front of the mobile home that we had posted the property and talked to him after we had posted and he had cleared those items when I went two months ago for my review. Okay, I'm about 1410 West 14th Street. I drove up there today and that's a blue mobile home on the west side of the street. 1410 West 14th. Yes, so that property also, so if, if a property clears, we do not take pictures of any items because those items that we asked for that property owner to clear have cleared. And so I had spoke with, I spoke with this property owner and the last thing that was remaining were the tires. And when I went for my review, the tires were gone. Okay, when I drove by this afternoon, it appears the trailer is abandoned and the weeds are easily waist high. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't monitor weeds um, as part of the nuisance abatement program, or else we would have to be doing reviews every single week for the communities, and then that would just kind of skyrocket um, the contract fees, so we don't monitor the weeds. That would be through the city. And Debbie Ford would be the person to contact if there are some weed violations or... And I'm more concerned about the abandoned trailer. I mean, the weeds are unsightly, sure, but the abandoned trailer worries me. With dogs, cats, homeless people, yada, 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 yada. Okay, I'll, I'll get with Debbie. Thank you, Erica. Thank you very much. Hey, Erica, what's your overall impression of the uh, actions taken in that area? You felt like it's, do you feel like you've seen quite a bit of improvement in the district after you guys started doing your work? Sure, sure. So my main tagline that I discuss with the other gals here in the office is when the cook says they're going to clean up, they clean up. I have found there have only been, you know, a couple of property owners that have been upset and has called and, you know, upset about the whole program being told what to do and how to do it. Other than that, property owners have been really great, you know, working with me. They have been communicative and I've seen a lot of cleanup. I have noticed a couple that have cleaned up and then when I cleared and then I go for my next review, they do have a couple big, big things, but unfortunately I can't just fold them back in. And those are what we call the repeat offenders. And we can, um, for the next nuisance season, if McCook decides to move forward and, uh, and go through the application process again, you know, there could be a chance that we pull in some of those repeat offenders. And what does that uh, new cycle look like? When would we need to go ahead and re-up with West Central? Sure. So applications are going to go out in October. So there will be an email that goes out to each community that lets them know the process, but 
it'll go out to the communities that are already in the nuisance abatement program um, currently, and they'll get those applications first. And so usually they're due, I believe, November 1st. Uh, we are having a little bit of staff changes here, so it might be a little bit of switch around, but it will be sometime in October and the communities will be provided um, enough time to get those come in to us. But I'll let you know for sure, a for sure date in September. Thank you, Erica. Thank you guys very much. Have a good night. See you later. Good night. Okay. Are you going to be? Yes. I'm, I move to approve resolution number 2024-21, approving the designation of nuisance properties as deemed by WCNDD and as declared in the resolution. I second that. Any discussion? <coughs> Those in favor, vote nay. Opposed, nay. RC needed to. It said that everyone was disconnected, so we needed to definitely refresh. Need to refresh. Oh. There it goes. All right. Five votes cast, Jay. No votes cast, Ted. Okay. <coughs> okay. Next item on the agenda is to approve. Resolution number 2024-20 to approving the rescinding a portion of resolution number 2024-13, which previously declared certain properties a nuisance and which now have been abated and cleared of the nuisance as deemed by WCMDD and as declared in the resolution. So moved. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor vote yay, opposed nay. All votes cast J, no votes cast nay. <coughs> okay, next item on the agenda is to approve resolution number 2024-23, approving the rescinding of a portion of the resolution number 2024-17 which previously declared certain properties a nuisance and which now have been abated and cleared of the nuisance at, as deemed by WCMDD and as declared in the resolution. So moved. Okay, I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor for the interest. Okay. I votes cast J, no votes cast nay. Next item on the agenda is to approve WCMDD's motion to abate for the properties located at 1110 West 13 McCook, Nebraska, 1401 West M McCook, Nebraska, 1111 West 12 McCook, Nebraska, and 1201 West 13 McCook, Nebraska be abated. Um, I'll second that. Or so moved, Nick. So moved. Second. Okay, great. Any discussion? <coughs> okay, all those in favor vote nay, opposed nay. Sorry, I didn't even open it. There you go. Okay. Five votes cast J, no votes cast nay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is ordinance number 2024-3085, providing for the adoption of the budget for the 2024-2025 year. I introduce ordinance number 2024-385 by Tyler and ask the clerk to please read the title. An ordinance to adopt a budget statement to return the annual appropriation bill to appropriate sums for necessary expenses and liabilities revived for an effective date. Ordinance number 2024-3085 has been read by title and I move to approve upon its third and final reading. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I wanted to uh, highlight a couple of things, but also want to thank the council and Leanne and Tara and the department heads. I know I said that during the, the reading of, of my transmittal letter. But this has been a very complicated budget season. By far and away, the most complicated budget season I've experienced since I've been city manager. I appreciate everybody hanging in there with us, and, and I hope that people understand. And we really do try our best to be good stewards of the taxpayer dollars. However, we do have obligations that the city has to meet, and we got to figure out how we 
you're going to pay for those obligations. The wage study in LB34 obviously created some, some difficulties for us this year. Um, but that being said, um, that's understated. Yeah, yeah. But that, that, that being said, though, I mean, I, I appreciate the discussions that we've had. I think this has probably been uh, maybe the most discussed budget we've had uh, in quite some time. Um, and, and it's hard. These are hard decisions. You know, everybody understands you know, the implications, but also we've got a job to do, and our primary job is to make sure that the city operates the way it's supposed to. So. I did want to go ahead and note a couple of different things here really quickly just to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, as far as uh, items that are outside of what we had talked about to begin with and, and uh, items that I want to make sure that we're all aware of, there is one police cruiser that we have included. Uh, that's $80,000 if I remember correctly. Is that right, Kevin? That, that also includes some software for dispatch that we already have in, in place that will come up for renewal. So that also includes. <coughs> okay. Now, on the public work side, uh, we've talked about kind of what we'd like to see over there um, to try to replace uh, some of the old equipment that we've had uh, that's getting, getting a little long in the tooth. So we're looking at uh, a new dump, dump, dump truck. Uh, mower uh, and then a truck and, and plow uh, and that would be approximately hopefully around $180,000 we're going to do our best to see what we can find I'm not sure exactly what that means you know, as far as what we get as far as the old dump truck uh, but Kyle and his guys are doing the best they possibly can to see what we can do uh, with those additional funds obviously the wage study uh, is something that we need to make sure that we are complying with uh, we've already done it with the Fraternal Order of Police and their contract. Earlier tonight, we had, um, during the consent agenda, we had an item for the uh, firefighter, paramedic, firefighter, lieutenant, uh, firefighter, EMT positions with respect to an MOU to make sure that we're accounting for, for the wage changes that the study called for for them. And then all of the other employees that we have, we're doing our best to try to follow along with the instructions that we have from Paul Essman. He's the one that conducted the wage study. In the past, we always get to the very bottom of the wage study, and then we never really go beyond there. That's the reason why we continuously have to update, update, update to make sure that we are uh, trying to keep up with the other communities in our array. This year, we need to make sure that we're finally placing everybody where they're supposed to be on that schedule so that way we can discontinue the process of updating over and over again and obviously with the uncertainties that go along with LB34 if we don't do it now I don't know what that means for the future years and so uh, that's why we made the recommendation originally we were talking about um, trying to put it in over a period of time the waste study findings uh, not just one year but multiple years but it kind of forced us to rethink that strategy uh, when we started thinking about what LB34 meant to the community. So um, other items that I wanted to make sure that I touched on with the council, uh, we did get word back from the insurance company. Um, Leanne, again, I don't know how she does it. I think that she's, I don't know if she's Karnak, the Magnificent or what, but, <laughs> but she had predicted 30% increase on the insurance side. I was like, uh, please tell me that's not gonna be the case. She's pretty darn close. Uh, the premium came in at 16% for everything, uh, and then the wind and hail increases that final amount to just under that 30% mark. So um, I hate the fact that she's right on this, but she was dead on the money on this one. And so, so we're going to continue to, and, and a lot of it is just driven by the, the large uh, weather events that we've seen all across the state, even though McCook may not experience it, it doesn't mean that other communities aren't experiencing it. That's not gonna change our insurance structure uh, for the upcoming year. So um, some cool things that we're doing this year, uh, the Inclusive Playground, that's a fundraised effort. Uh, the, I don't know if they actually came and spoke with you, it was Mariah Pearson, uh, Trisha Wagner, I think it was Haley Wieners that was here. Uh, but they came here and they kind of gave the council maybe uh, some insight into what they're thinking. 
we've applied for numerous grants. I know we've got a DVD grant out there for five hundred thousand dollars. I want to say there's another grant that we got out there for a hundred thousand. Is that right? Uh, maybe some other opportunities that are out there as well too. I know Kara's got a meeting uh, with some people from property door tree. Door tree. I'm thinking of the lead singer of the uh, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> the door tree foundation. They're going to be here on Wednesday. Uh, so, so we have fifty thousand dollars that the council has set uh, aside in the general fund to help pay for the inclusive playground. We may not need to based upon how these grants play out um, so we'll kind of watch and see and, and uh, looking forward to that project moving forward uh, we also have the safe streets for all grant that kind of ties into the projects that we're seeing around town whether it's over on south street highway 83 where you're going to see more truck traffic due to the fact that the industrial park is expanding to the east over on the northwest side of town where you're going to see a sports complex residential and commercial development here in the near future. We've got to figure out exactly what we need to do on the street side to make sure that we're as safe a community as we possibly can be. But there's some cool things that are happening. And this planning grant's gonna go a long ways into uh, assisting us with, with the, the project. Uh, and then hopefully this is gonna make it also a little bit easier for us to get a construction grant in the future as well. Um, We've got $75,000 set aside for an airport improvement project. That's through sales tax. Um, we're almost done with the AMP, the airport master plan slash airport layout plan project. Uh, it's been a little bit longer than we anticipated, but once that is done, we're gonna be ready to move forward with some projects out there uh, in the airfield. Um, we've got some things identified right now. Just remember it's a 10% match. So out of that $75,000, it's 10% over the overall project cost. It may be a little bit less this year. We're not quite sure exactly what we're gonna have on that project list, uh, but we wanted to make sure that we had everything covered just to be on the safe side. So uh, if we put in $75,000, it means that the federal government is putting in $750,000. Is my math right on that, Kyle? Mm -hmm. Thank you. My fact checker is back on my face, so I appreciate that. Um, also, we're talking about $25,000 putting towards the parking lot project over at the swimming pool. Um, right now, we're installing the sprinkler systems. Uh, also, there's going to be some sod that's coming in, I think, this week, if I remember correctly. Thursday. Thursday, yeah. So, um, it's going to look really nice and neat around that area. Uh, that parking lot is going to be uh, a cost that we need to make sure that we're taking into account. So, that's included. Too. Are we looking at for next year then? For this year? Yeah, for this upcoming year. Yeah. 2025? 24, 25. Okay. Probably 25. I don't know what the timing is. For, for, for when we actually do the work up there. Oh, I'm waiting on an estimate back. It's, it could be yet this year. Um, and then also, uh, we've got uncommitted sales tax that we're putting towards the purchase of the Walters property. I'm going to go through a breakdown of everything here as soon as I go through this sheet, just so Leanne and I on Friday morning, uh, we were running around doing about 100 different things, but we got together and we said we got to identify where the pots of money in the general fund are going to come from to pay for the Walters property. So we've got a pretty good plan moving forward. And you have to correct ourselves. It'd be six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars from federal funds. So that's seven hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, that sounds right to me too. I was thinking that doesn't sound quite right. I said seven fifty. Thank you. Um. So, uh, one thing I did want to note, I know the council is aware of this. Uh, the bond sale is complete. We should receive the proceeds proceeds from the bond sale on September twentieth, which is this Friday. Right. Um, and then closing is still set for October 2nd. Nate's helping us get all the pieces of the puzzle put together. Um, I think that we're getting everything pretty much. I got the signing of surveys today that staff should have brought over. And I think I saw that sitting on my desk. Yes, yeah, uh, that was the last piece that we were really waiting for is for that to get done. So yeah, the closing should be pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. And last week, Leanne, Tara, and I had a conversation with Mike Rogers, our bond counsel. There's some information we're sending over to them just to make sure that we're complying with all the federal requirements. And I feel comfortable with that too. So I think we sent that over to the 
So, yep. So we're good to go on that side. One thing that I wanted to mention when we were talking with Erica, um, you know, in the general fund, and I always say this, I really struggle putting public funds into private people's problems. I'm not a big fan of putting money into nuisance funds uh, because I think that private individuals should take care of their own issue. It shouldn't be a public issue, but we have um, budgeted for that. And we did account for both uh, West Central, which I think their contract was $22,500 this year. And we um, have an additional amount budgeted to hopefully take out one house. Um, so we've got $40,000 budgeted this year as opposed to $25,000. It's not a lot, or it doesn't sound like a lot, uh, or sorry, take it back. It sounds like a lot, but when you realize that taking out a house is about $18,000 to $27,000, it's really not that much. So again, I would ask for people to make sure they take care of their own properties. Um, it really shouldn't be a public issue, but it falls in our laps when those things do happen and deteriorate. Um, and then I wanted to go through the Walters property discussion because this ties in directly to uh, our budget. I mentioned the fact, so the purchase price for the Walters property is $3.186 million. And I mentioned this before in the past, the reason or the, the way that we came up with that price, uh, we had an appraisal, uh, after the appraisal, um, we, we realized that number probably wasn't quite accurate because it gave an agricultural value to that property. It's actually gonna be a mixed use property. And so we spent a lot of time, Tara and Charlie and Amanda, Kyle, myself, looking around the state and other cities of the first class, trying to figure out how much does this kind of property go for? So we looked at Crete, we looked at Seward, we looked at York, we looked at Scotts Bluff, we looked at Lexington, we looked at Kearney and other cities of the first class, trying to figure out how much is this, that, this land worth? And the fact that you've got commercial, residential, and then also um, the sports complex included $25,000. I think at the end of the day is going to be a bargain. That's $25,000 per acre. Um, but I think that we're going to see uh, us redeem that fairly easily once we start uh, developing that property. Because uh, we've always had people that have come to McCook and said, hey, we want to develop in certain districts, well, this is a district that they're gonna to wanna to develop in, and so you might start seeing other big developments in that area. You've already seen some good ones on Highway 83, whether it's the Cobblestone or the Holiday Inn. Um, I'm sure that there are other, I know Kyle and I have driven up that stretch of road about a billion times with developers looking at it. Um, but now we can start actually talking to developers and saying, we've got some land for you, please look at my book. Um, so, the other uh, areas that we've identified to assist with the purchase of the land, aside from the bond proceeds, which we're earmarking a half of those bond proceeds to put towards the purchase price, which is 1.593 million. We've also spoke with Charlie over at MEDC, and I can't confirm this, but I think that they're going to assist uh, with LB840 dollars. Um, and we talked about a number, we're thinking maybe $250,000-ish. So that's kind of what we've got penciled in right now. Sales tax, we have uncommitted sales tax in the amount of $628,000. Thank you to the people that voted for the sales tax. It's gonna help with this purchase. Um, this dates back to 2001, 2007, and 2015. But for the sales tax, this doesn't happen. And this is the biggest project that we've seen in Mokoke since 1980 when the golf course came in. Probably. So, so that's that's huge. Uh, CDA city investments. This is Valmont money uh, that's that's sitting there. I don't know why it's there or exactly what that it's is. Like it's interest that was generated. It's interest that was generated on the, it's the bond proceeds. Okay, there's sixty five thousand dollars there that we're gonna put towards it, and then we're looking at a combination of LB eight forty motor vehicle funds, debt service funds, uh, which is what we use for improvement districts. And then also insurance proceeds to go ahead and round out the remainder of the uh, funds that we're going to utilize to purchase the property. Ultimately, our plan is to replenish the LB840 fund, to replenish our funds as we sell off lots, and I don't think that's going to be an issue. Uh, 
who was believed that you're going to start seeing people that are going to want to develop for McCook. I've had great conversations with Amanda and Charlie about developers that are looking at McCook and they've just been waiting for this to happen. You know, the sports complex is the, the key to development. So uh, that's where we're going to pay for the land from. We're excited to close on it. And it's only a couple weeks away now. So. And then the fun begins. We've been talking about that today. You know, the planning for the, the sports complex. I can't wait to do that. So, anything I can't think of? Just to clarify, if we keep going to the following pages where it was just reading that down, um, it, we need to reallocate on your sales tax that's included in the budget. So, the ones that, that the ballpark improvement, the pool improvements, the uncommitted amounts will be revised so it's not going to show that it's coming out of the complex in the final budget document or coming out for the complex. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, are you ready? Okay, we have a motion and a second to for ordinance number 2024-385 to approve on the third and final reading. All those in favor will be approved. Five votes cast, Jay, no votes cast. <coughs> okay, ordinance number 2024-3086, providing for the adoption of the 2024-2025 fiscal year employee classification plan. I introduce ordinance number 2024-3086 by title and ask the clerk to please read the title. An ordinance of the City of McCook, Nebraska, providing for the adoption of the 2024-2025 fiscal year employee classification and pay plan, providing for an effective date of implementation of the classification and pay plan, repealing any and all other ordinances in conflict herewith, providing for a time and date from an act of which this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced. Ordinance number 2024 3086. Has been read by title, and I move to approve on its third and final reading. Second. Okay. Any discussion here? So again, you know, this we've talked about the wage study. You know, the, the plan in front of you uh, is a direct result of the work that was done in the wage study. I know we've mentioned it before. Public entities play by you know the rules that the state sets up. And so we have to make sure that we're following along with the terms that are given to us by the Industrial Relations Act. This provision or this, this plan does that. Uh, and hopefully it's going to mean that our guys over here and gals are able to hire good people to work for them. I think that's been a struggle for us, trying to find people that are willing to take positions that we've been advertising and that we've been trying to fill. I'm hoping that this makes us competitive. Um, and moving forward, you know, when we've got vacancies, uh, we're able to, to fill them. And then also, I think that it tells our current employees that, hey, you know what, you're valued. We're making sure that, that uh, you're treated the same as other communities that are, that are similar to us. And I really do think that it's going to have a positive impact on our operations and in turn the city of Mokoko. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor vote yes, yeah, nice name. Five votes cast, Jay, no votes cast, nay. Ordinance number 2024-2036 is declared lawfully passed and adopted upon publication as required by law. Next item on the agenda is ordinance number 2024-3088 providing for the amendment of Chapter 38, Appendix E, Water Department Rates and Fees. I introduce Ordinance Number 2024-3088 by title. Ask the clerk to please read the title. An ordinance providing for the amendment of Chapter 38, Fee Schedule, Appendix E, Water Department Rates and Fees of the City of McCook Code of Ordinances, providing for a rate to be charged for water by the McCook Water Department, providing for the repeal of Ordinance Number 2024-3076, and any and all other ordinances in conflict herewith, providing for a time and date from an act of which this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced. Ordinance number 2024-388 has been read by Adam. I move to approve upon its second and third reading. I'll second that. All those in favor vote yay, opposed nay. Five 
Bucks cash Jane, the Bucks cash Smith. Okay, next item on the agenda is ordinance number 2024-3089, providing for the amendment of chapter 38, appendix B, sewer department pays and fees. I introduce ordinance number 2024-3089. By title, I ask the clerk to please read the title. An ordinance providing for the amendment of chapter 38, fee schedule, appendix B, sewer department rates and fees of the city of Cook Code of Ordinances, provided for the repeal of ordinance number 2024-3077 and any and all other ordinances in conflict herewith, providing a time and date coming up for which this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced. Ordinance number 2024-3089 has been read by title, and I move to approve upon a second of three readings. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor vote yay, opposed nay. My vote's cast J, my vote's cast nay. Okay, ordinance number 2024-3087, providing for the amendment of Appendix F, solid waste collection fees of the City of McCook Code of Ordinances. With the clerk, I introduce ordinance number 2024-3087 by title and ask the clerk to please read that title. An ordinance providing for the amendment of Appendix F, solid waste collection fees of the City of McCook, Nebraska Code of Ordinances, providing for a rate to be charged for solid waste collection and disposal, providing for the repeal of ordinance number 2023-3072, and any and all ordinances conflict herewith, and providing for publication in pamphlet form and for an effective date. Ordinance number 2024-3087 has been read by title, and I move to approve upon its second of three readings. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor vote yay, opposed nay. My votes cast yay, my votes cast nay. Okay, next item on the agenda is to consider ordinance number 2024-3091, setting the salary and compensation of city manager Nathan A. Snyder. I introduce ordinance number 2024-3891 by title and ask the clerk to please read the title. An ordinance in the City of McCook, Nebraska, setting the salary and compensation of the City Manager of the City of McCook, Nebraska, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith, providing a time and date coming after which this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced. Ordinance number 2024-3091 has been reduced, read by title, and I move that the statutory rule requiring reading on three different days be suspended. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor vote yay, opposed nay. Gee, welcome for another day. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy what I do. <laughs> Bye, no votes cast. Yay, no votes cast nay. Okay. I move for final passage of ordinance number 2024 3091. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor vote yay, opposed nay. Assisting, he's going to take us out for ice cream afterwards. <laughs> yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's on. Well, we'll, we'll go bring it on the house. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go <laughs> yeah, I think I've got a tab on it. Five so. votes cast today, no votes cast today. Ordinance number 2024-3091 is declared lawfully passed and adopted upon publication as required by law. Is there any comments? Anybody? The true birthday today. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yes. I thought we'd have ice cream and cake later. So oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> On the house. house. <laughs> no, I am. <laughs> wow. Okay, I declare this. There being no further business to come before the council, I declare this meeting adjourned at 6.51 p.m.